in the winter time during a snowstorm if there's a problem at the compressor station? It gets station. plowed. We get some pretty serious snowstorms up here, you know. Are you going to plow it all night? Site, what, how's that work? My understanding, the site is, is operated every day, so yeah. there will be somebody there every day. So is it 24-7? Because I, I also heard there was only two people during business hours, mm -hmm. which is different than like 24-7 because it's operated 24-7. Yeah, so like mm -hmm. if there's a fire, and we have local volunteer fire stations. Yeah, I mean, that's it's, a lot. That would be John, the operations guy, with his back to us. He'd be able to answer that for you. Yeah, we talked to him. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. This talk is the everybody. problem with this kind of forum. Is it's like yeah. we're well, kind of being sent from one table to the other. I'm a project manager or environmental project manager for FERC. And you're working on? We're working on uh, the eastern system upgrade for the. Um, sorry, not the company at this point. Um, uh, it's the docket number is for our for our project that we're reviewing is pre, in pre-filing. So our docket number is uh, PF 16-3. And we'll look at that and get the additional information. Okay. And, uh, Thank you. And is this your first project? No, it's not. Actually. How many have you done? Uh, this would be probably the fifth. Different varying degrees of projects for environmental assessments to environmental impacts. And what's your schooling or your background, if you don't mind? I'm from the University of Tennessee, master's in uh, anthropology from an archaeologist by training. Thank you very much. I, I'd like to know why the people in Minasink are suffering from headaches, rashes, and nosebleeds. I can't speak to that. I don't. I, well, don't, I didn't prepare those studies, so I really okay, don't. Know. Have you looked at the studies? I have. And, and what's your response to them? I, I really can't speak to them. I because don't know. you're a spokesperson for Millennium. I don't well, understand. I'm, I'm preparing the air permits for the Eastern System upgrade. I didn't prepare anything for Minnesota. Okay, so when you prepare those air permits, is that not a consideration to look well, at your previous I've operation? Read the studies and okay. will, um, will you monitor what's coming out of the stacks? And, and I will make sure that it meets all applicable air quality requirements. That's not. We're not monitoring it unless if there's a requirement by the DEC. I, I, un I understand be. there's no requirement, but if people are getting sick, isn't your isn't it the duty of the corporation that's? It, it, see, you're automatically assuming yeah. that. It's the Millennium Station that's well, causing the sickness, and well, that has not been defined But, but yet. we do know, we do know that air monitors have been placed around that area. I've read that study, yes. and, and I, I don't think it's a dispositive study, truthfully. Yeah, it, I, because? It, it doesn't appear to have been done very robust. So, uh, would you, would Millennium do a robust study? I, at this point, if it's required, they would. At so, only point, if it's I required by it's law. Well, I can say, right. I can't speak to whether the study was done correctly or not. I did not prepare that study. Right. Uh, but but I'm interested, it. as a corporation, whether whether you are going to be responsible citizens to the community. I believe that they are working with that group to the extent that they can. Uh, Which group? Talking to them. I believe there's the Stop Menacing group. I believe they've talked with them. But uh, well, I'm, I'm from Highland, and, and no one said anything to us about... Uh, Monitoring Again, the air. I can't speak to any of that. Uh, I'm tasked uh, as an environmental consultant mm -hmm. to prepare the air quality. Permits. Are you on staff with Millennium? No, or you I'm just, not. You're, I'm an you're an independent contractor. I'm an independent contractor. consultant. Okay, I so work. you're paid by Millennium. That is correct. Okay, thank you very much. With group discussion as opposed to breakup discussion, um, and also the fact that people are getting conflicting information tonight as well as misinformation, and so we want to have a redo in an accessible location with a format that is more helpful and informative to the And actually, I like to do smaller venues, um, either at a restaurant or uh, a smaller venue where I've got... We can uh, offer you the town uh, hall. A, a, a contingent of maybe 20 or 30 people. You could do... And then speak to them individually. Bring in the experts that you tell me that you want to hear from. And then you can put them in front of you so your concerns, and then you can respond. So if you want to have a boatload of smaller venues that all have to be open to the public, so anybody who can come to them, that are appropriately located, so they're accessible, 
including to people who have infirmities, who have difficulty traveling. Um, you know, frankly, if there's smaller venues, we're just going to need more sessions, which is worth your time. Um, but, you know, George said they can find... And we'd be happy to the town hall. I know they'd love to host you in, in Highland. That's not the impression that I got, but it also wasn't large enough for this event um, that I needed to. But if we're doing smaller groups, we could probably get you the school school gymnasium. Yeah, that's fine. Available. You know, I like the smaller groups, and I am happy to host 10, 20 to 30 person sessions. We've got all. This is the concern. This is, this is the, the problem with that. Is people? You have a lot of people that want the benefit of the information, and they want the benefit of the collective dialogue. And there are a lot of people who don't know the right questions to ask but they understand the answers that are being given. And so they want to be there to hear the question from their neighbors and to hear the answers that are given to the collective. So, you know, they need to be large enough venues that it can be open to the public and everybody who can attend can be accommodated. But to break it up into 10 or 20 person discussions, it's just that's just another way of redoing tonight in, in a better format, but still another redo of tonight. And that's a tremendous concern to the community. Fragmentation so, of the information is really bad for us. It may be better for you, but it's bad for us because when you fragment the information to groups of 20, 20, 20, there's no communication between you and us. So Whereas so if you I have a larger that. venue with a lot of people that are able to come to this particular event, and there should be a few of these events happening, there are many schools that could accommodate several hundred people. That is what should happen. An executive from Millennium Eastern should should come by and give information. There should be a panel, and there should be a discourse between the, the communities that are involved in this and you guys. That's that's the first thing that should happen. So I want this to be a dialogue, but what I'm hearing is you don't like a large venue like this, but you're also not okay with a very small venue. I want to make sure I'm understanding what I like the large want. venue. So, so, so that's that not what I said. You. That's not. No, that's no, I'm just asking for clarification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can this, I may I? May I? Yes. This this is a large venue. But we're in breakout groups, and there's little tables, and people explaining things to individuals. Yeah. What we're asking for is a large venue where there will be a microphone and maybe a PowerPoint presentation, and Millennium will explain here's what a compressor is, and give the public a chance to ask questions from the microphone from you people, so we can understand with all people of the who can answer the questions fully and not be told, "Oh, look on this website." So. We and just told, so you're we aware, I have offered to give these presentations at a uh, county legislative meeting, and I've also offered to give them at a town board meeting, and I have not been taken up on either of those. So just so, so you know, well, we, you we have already made up. those offers. We're okay, who, 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 wait, could you tell me... your officials and let them know that. Could you tell me who you, who yeah. you asked in the, in the county and in our town? Yeah, Jeff Haas, and I told Scott Samuelson. But the other thing is, is we don't. I'm sorry, what? Why should the politicians? No, they didn't say no. They, they said okay. And I said, well, let me know when you want to do it. And they said okay. And I never but heard back. We're so, gonna. We'll do it. You know, okay. just, if you would like to facilitate that, we are yeah. happy to take you up on that. We will facilitate Absolutely. that. Set that up. That would be. That would be our pleasure. I offered that January 6th, the first day I met with Mr. Haas. I made that offer in January. Mike also said that you would give us a tour of the compressor station. Absolutely. So now I would also that say that. Email you. Do you want to do a large? People That's what I was going to say. It, it works better if we do, instead of piecemealing it to here and to there, if you can get a group of at least five to ten people, email me. I will send you a tour request form. You send me three dates that work well for you and the list of names of people and what exactly it is that you're looking to have answered so that I have the right experts about the station on staff. I check with the station on the, making sure which dates are best for them that work with yours. I co coordinate those dates. We all go out to the station and I give you the tour. So can you send me that form and then yeah. I can... So I, I mean, we're going to be can. doing it as a collective, so sure. if you send it to any yeah. one of us. So if you can send that to me, we will work on that. We'll work on getting the venue and being very clear about the questions, the kinds of things we want to hear about, so you can have the right experts uh, with the PowerPoint and the microphone. Okay. Great. And we're hopefully we'll do that in the next month or so. In the next month. I would say in the next month would be a fair now, amount of time, yeah. Now, I just, I, this is a little off the topic, but I asked the man who says, his button says construction, I forget his name. Mike said, Armstrong. Are you a construction? No, not, not, not Mike, the okay. other man. Okay. I said, are you a construction? He says, no, I'm not really construction, I'm just, um, I'm a surveyor, but they put construction on here because it's simple. Can you explain why Millennium would put construction if he's a surveyor? 
What well, is we don't tag? really have a. So we had to break these down as best we could into categories. So he can speak to the way that the pipeline is built, um, and he does a lot of the pre-construction surveying. I mean, but there's not really a, a station for that. So we broke it down into various categories. We did the best we could to condense them. I, you know, okay. it was not it was not to trick anyone. It seemed weird. Okay, um, I have a question. I, have you seen the Minnesink Health Studies? Um, you mean the self-reported one? Yes. Not the self-reported one. The one done by Southeast Pennsylvania Project. Oh, that one. Yes. You've seen that. I have. So, how do you explain why people are getting nosebleeds, rashes, and headaches? I will not. I will not. Is there a Millennium person who will? We have our health and environmental folks in the back corner. Yeah, they couldn't really explain that either. So, I am not a health expert. Okay. That's a very important point that we're, that we're standing here. Do you, do you agree that that's something that Millennium should be looking into? Absolutely. Okay. Would they be? Would Millennium be willing to monitor all emissions from their compressor station as a whole, whether it's the engines, the stacks, the condensate tanks? So I can't tell you what they are willing to do, but I am certainly willing to take that request back to the executives. Okay. Which is, again, and I don't know if you were standing here when I said this before, that is why we hold these meetings. You tell me what you want and need to feel well, comfortable we, in your community, and then it's my job to take that information back to Millennium. We want full monitoring for three months on, or let's make it six months, because you're not going to build for, for a year or so. For six months on your, your Minisync and your Hancock compressors <laughs> of all emissions, not just the ones that are, you are required by law, but all emissions, so that we have a full and complete picture. Okay. But That's so what we'd like. So it should be a 24-7. 24-7. Specific moments so that we get spikes there everything. Isn't anything happening. That's right. Because we want to know what comes out during blowdowns and releases and the whole picture. We want to be 24/7. We want to grab. Okay. Si to since to that's going validate. to happen in our community. So I will take that back. Mm -hmm. But I've also had about uh, 50 other people make requests to my face verbally tonight. Oh, I'll send um, you an email on that. Don't worry. Send me an email. <laughs> we have comment cards at the front table. Yep. One or the other will yeah. get you there. Okay. But um, my brain only holds okay. so much. Sure enough. I understand. I understand. So, but please. I understand. Just because we live there, we're going to be the ones who are breathing it. Understood. And I know that if it was in your community, Understood. you wouldn't want your family okay. breathing what you comes out of this mind. facility. Understood. Um, Again, okay. this is why we hold this. I want your comments and feedback. I take it back to the company. We okay. haven't filed a proposal yet. The proposal gets filed in July. So I that's why we do this now. We What's filed in July? The proposal. The proposal. We yeah. haven't put the proposal to So this is so. extremely premature, I guess yeah. I would say. It's a rough draft, if you will, of the basic overview of what we would like to do. Right. Um, this is your time to tell us what you want and need from it. And then it's, it's our job to comply. Mm -hmm. They hired me. Um, before they started this project um, because they knew that they needed someone to be that liaison with the public and bring things back to Millennium. They didn't have someone in this role up to now. So that's what I'm here for. Okay, you, you've said uh, in a number of outlets that this is a kind of a good compressor, not one of those dirty compressors that are out in I never the used production. the word good. <laughs> yeah. Don't put, don't put, no. Okay, so I said what we're being... What, some of the misinformation in the community right now, mm -hmm. some of the statistics I've seen, mm -hmm. some of the chemicals I've seen, mm -hmm. I've heard it referred to as a wet compressor. Mm -hmm. That's not what this I, is. I don't know where you've heard that. Actually, your scram paper that went around, I, mm -hmm. it's in the first line of it. It says it's a wet compressor. Um, it does. I will look at that. Okay. I will look at that. And the other ones are not wet compressors? Ours are not, ma'am. It's a no. dry compressor. It's a dry compressor. Um, it's called a transmission compressor, and it pushes the gas down the pipe. Wet compressors are what they use when they pull the natural gas out and it's got water and sand and uh, a, I guess a number of the other chemicals, I'm not familiar with them, but a number of the other chemicals. That's where they extract and separate out and dry out the natural gas before they put it in our pipeline um, and send it down. So they're, they're completely different animals. And okay, so but this compressor that, that we're getting though is... It's a dry compressor. It's a dry compressor and what kind of emissions does it emit? Anything that could be considered carcinogenic or or toxic in any to way? To my knowledge, it's natural gas. That's not the question. Does it admit anything that is carcinogenic or toxic in any way? Natural gas is 98% methane. Mm, well, that's, I'm sorry, that's, what? That's a very again, evasive answer. That, no, 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 you understand no, that. But I'm not a health expert, and that's why we have health experts but here. This is, right. so, this is why this particular venue, this particular format of information giving, 
is so faulty because See. the information is not given to everybody in the group. And, and, and the questions that we ask are not your expertise. And there should be a panel up there telling us, somebody on that panel should be able to answer that question. This disseminates information, much of it faulty, much of it inadequate, and therefore it's really not a good and, way and to go about I, I, Can I, I ask just, a question said, without said it's a, Sure, you said it's a, it's a, it doesn't emit bad toxins or so, it just emits exactly. natural so gas. I don't. But you, you're, you've been saying in the paper, oh, people are confused. This is not one of those bad compressors. Well, we'd like to know No, I said it's how... not a fracking compressor is what right. I said. Okay. It's not a fracking compressor. Okay. So True enough. So formaldehyde, mm. radon, no, those things No formaldehyde and radon will ever come out of this facility? Of course no. it's radon. It's, it's the Marcellus shield. Yeah. And it comes so out of your pipes. By the time the they clean it out with those wet compressors, which mm. are at the fracking sites, mm. and filter it, so, I mean, you... So you guys probably know about radon. If you have a house that's been cooped up for weeks, months, a year, and you have a basement in that house, the radon levels are going to be much not higher. Always, not always. Because mm. it depends on where the house is. You okay. can have radon so, and you cannot have yeah, radon. Yeah, but when you so send a, a pig along through those, those pipelines, it cleans out radon. Along those same Where does that come from? Along those same lines, yeah. when natural gas is pulled from the ground and then it's sent through multiple filters at multiple compressor stations and comes down, that radon is dissipated it's not. from its site. There's still radon coming out of a compressor station. There's radon coming out of a compressor station. Okay. You, tell me you're, okay. you told us yourself you're not an expert. It, radon comes through the pipes. Okay. Has there that been measured? Uh, radon just, at and the your information line. is coming from? I've been doing research on it for quite some time. The Hancock Compressor Station Air Permit from a couple years ago says that VOCs and uh, hazardous air pollutants, including formaldehyde, would be predicted emissions from that station. So from the Hancock from Station? Hancock, which is just one down the line. I'd be happy to look at whatever it is that you have. That's, that's in that your you FERC have. application, yeah. actually. It says, it says explicitly that those substances will be released from that compressor station. It's so slightly less than at the fracking compressors. Slightly less. It's but like 95% methane compared to 87% right. methane. Slightly less until there's a the blowdown. Do you know why Mr. Haas probably didn't get back to you? He had to recuse himself. Oh, I knew that. I knew that. I've been dealing with Mr. Gutekunst. Okay. I thought you said But I asked him in January, and he didn't recuse himself until about two weeks ago. So okay, well, I asked him January 6th. probably 6. knew his son was applying. Anyway, I think that's very... Right.